the way I see it, there's a couple ways you can go with building uh, in a more sustainable way. And I kind of want to make a distinction between the, the, the two. I suppose that there might be things in between that are okay, but let's, uh, let's explore this. So, number one, uh, we've built, been building in too temporary a way. Uh, we build for a 30-year mortgage in the States, and uh, people aren't thinking about investing in their culture long-term. Uh, people are more transient, and it really is a shame. Also a shame to find a cistern left open. Um, well, yeah, so there's two ways we can go with uh, kind of building in a more sustainable way. We could either go in a way so we build buildings really well designed, really well built, built to last 1,500 years and with a maintenance plan for anything needed. Uh, or we can build out of uh, purely natural materials in a way so the entire building can rot. And those, uh, I, I see that as more difficult in some ways, but we can relearn how to do that. Um, we've around the world uh, built, uh, humans have built a great many earth structures. There's uh, more earth structures probably than there are not. And uh, so recapturing some of that knowledge would be helpful. So it's kind of the two directions. I, I think we can kind of mix them by having as much sustainable materials within a building as possible. And I don't include with that wood. I don't think wood is a sustainable material for your primary structure. I think wood's higher use is in making furniture or um, things that wood is really best at that, that uh, nothing else is as good for. Um, that may seem odd, I mean, not to even want to use uh, logs for beams, but I mean, maybe if a beam was going to be there for a thousand years, if you can assure that it's protected, it's moisture and so forth. But I think that's one of the other reasons I've come down with the, the concrete idea, because uh, if we cut the forest down, which is what happens around every city, then we lose uh, the primary uh, habitat of the area, and we destroy a lot of economic opportunities for sustainable use. Uh, my advice for anyone zoning out a new city is to set aside a minimum of half of the land to be kept as uh, pristine wilderness. Uh, perhaps a quarter of that, uh, start doing food forest farming but very carefully, making sure your total uh, density uh, biomass is very high. Uh, I, I don't know of any civilizations that have managed to do that uh, with any level of technological complexity. And so that's kind of the, the trick we have here is, is how can we actually live the lives we're living and would like to keep living and won't be able to uh, and it's, it's just going to, I mean that's going to be a <laughs> A good trick. It's going to be kind of astoundingly difficult uh, to transition, and we're going to have to question every single part of how we live. Now, one one thing I, I I mean, a lot of people get very discouraged about the future, and I do too. I get almost despondent, I suppose. But it is true that this is the first time in history where such a mass number of people now can share thought. They can uh, do what I'm doing and talking to you, and uh, they can photograph things and share designs. Um, we're making such amazing advances, and, and you'd think that'd be a good reason for optimism. I, I have some difficulty being optimistic because I see an energy crisis that is going to be crippling. Uh, however, if we're really smart really quick, we could probably uh, have pockets of uh, utopia and perhaps uh, advanced thought using the energy-rich world that we're in now, uh, applied and, and then uh, tweaked and experimented with in various ways so that we can actually come up with a, a human culture that works for us. And the, the, the encouraging part is that we have this connection now with all these ideas. So all we have to do, and most people don't want to do this probably, but all we have to do is, is drop being enslaved by the culture we were brought up in. That's one of the reasons travel is good for you. Broadens the mind. Reading is good for you. Because if people continue to just do what has been done, then the outlook is extremely uh, uh, pessimistic. It's not good. Uh, but we have this amazing opportunity for the first time. So many people, so connected with so many ideas, so potentially enlightened, uh, so mixing of uh, cultural elements, uh, so scientifically aware. Uh, we, we have this amazing space in which we can 
and really create a, a, a nearly utopian society. But the number one thing we've got to do is quickly stop consuming or develop a lifestyle that is not so consumption oriented. Um, and th this isn't just about buildings or food or gardens. This is about every detail of how we deal with each other. I mean, what are our systems of social justice? Do we gossip? How do we gossip? Uh, how do we punish each other? How do we invest in each other? How do we invest in children? What is investing? What is a good thing to do or not do? And right now, we, we know that our own culture isn't necessarily the, the best one, because we've seen how cultural mixing is going. And uh, uh, we see mixes that seem to be positive and ones that seem to be negative. We can select among every single attribute of how a culture can be. And that requires that, that in a sense, a, a society has a, an open mind that, that they are not magically correct. And that, that's fine. They can keep doing things mainly the way they're doing them. But to really have a look at what that culture is doing and, and how it relates to others as well. That opportunity for cultural design is uh, kind of exciting. And also, it's kind of fun. I mean. Uh, there's a lot more things to know in the world now. There's more kinds of food and spices and, and uh, ways of doing things. It even gets down to something very simple. Uh, I mentioned these buildings that, that I think we should live a little denser and you know, multi-floor buildings built into the slope. Uh, that density frightens me. I currently live with uh, nobody at all within about a mile. Um, and people kind of freak me out when they're around because I'm really not used to them anymore. So <laughs> speculating about uh, this kind of building uh, freaks me out too, and I can understand anybody who's worried about it. We can even engineer small things though. Let's look at this case. I don't want to live in a building with a bunch of other people because they're going to talk to me and bug me. That's, that's a design flaw. It's, it's too great a density. Uh, however, there are things we could do, and I'm going to experiment with these here a little bit. Uh, this is a... This is a green uh, scarfy thing. If I put it around my neck and you see me, please don't talk to me. Doesn't mean I don't like you. Uh, doesn't mean if there's, you know, your leg is broken that you wouldn't talk to me. But uh, I'm kind of in a silent uh, meditation. Now I can always take it off and go up and talk to somebody if I wish to. Um, but the best thing to do if you see me or someone else with a green scarf like this or these colors here. Uh, is to basically pretend they're not there. You don't have to get weird about it or like avert your eyes or anything, but uh, this is a, a tool for people who are essentially in a meditation retreat. And that meditation retreat does not have to be pseudo-spiritual bullshit. It doesn't even have to be very meditative. It just means you're checking out. It doesn't have to be arduous. Uh, here in the Bosque, there's no formal spirituality, but there are times when I want privacy, I guess. And so by putting on one of these, you don't need three, just one's fine. Uh, you can protect yourself from that. We have people come here, some of them are Buddhists, who want to me actually meditate, and that's cool. Totally support that. Uh, there's writers who want to come here. Sometimes there's people who just want to get the hell out of the city and not talk to anybody. And what I want to do is respect someone's ability to turn off the social spigot that assaults them. I don't even want to have to say, hello, how are you, or my day is fine. I don't care uh, about talking in many cases. Um, and if you know too many people in a space, then people tend to uh, kind of assault you. And uh, some of them I don't enjoy talking with anyway. But in any case, this is a, a beautiful option. Uh, for for a, it's, a, it's an example of simple cultural innovations to solve uh, problems. This gets into cultural design, and, and really, I mean, the word holistic is, uh, I think, often misapplied to foofy stuff, but uh, we, we have to not just look at the design of the building, or even the design of how the users will use the building, but what culture, what cultural attributes allow us to eat and be housed and look at every system of every part of the energy to, to create a society that doesn't destroy the earth around it and that is comfortable and sustainable. And, and so when you look at you know, holistic in that sense, there's almost no details you can leave out. I mean, you've got to include bats, bat houses, and how to keep them out of your house. I have them in my house. It's very annoying. 
Um, you gotta decide for every single energy input and output, every single atom of matter that comes near that building or leaves it uh, should be uh, considered and accounted for. Even the air that is coming off the building. Uh, 